James Ham is a Westmeath farmer, an advocate for the importance of hedges in today's agricultural world. He has felt that the importance of the hedge for Ireland today has either been forgotten or just ignored. Yet these common icons of the countryside have a huge part to play in the survival of Ireland's fragile ecosystem into the future. If I was to say to you that we'd take a drive from Dublin to Galway or we'd start in Donegal town and we'd drive to Cork uh, and make a list of the man-made structures that we encounter on the way. And when we'd come back, a lot of people would have a list with things like roads and bridges, old and new, and hospitals and railways and beneficial uses that they have. And we tend to uh, take for granted what we've driven through all the way through the countryside, and that's the hedgerow network, which is a man-made structure. Those man-made structures were once a major part of the lived life on a farm, part of their barriers, their protection and their food. But how and what they did and to what benefit, we have largely forgotten today. The, the problem is the knowledge we have lost. Now that is a dangerous thing because it loses a lot of self-reliance. We, we're dependent all the time now on what's on the shelf and what's in that coloury packet and what's telling us on the television that we need to buy the coloury packet that's on the shelf. So instead of that, if we had the knowledge, if I had the knowledge that my great grandparents had, I'm sure, I would be a lot more self-reliant in what I can achieve in, 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 in my daily needs from the hedges that we have on the farm. That loss of knowledge, coupled with the devastating removal of forests over many centuries for agriculture, has left us depending on hedges to do all the heavy lifting in the survival of wild species, both insect and mammal, around Ireland today. In Ireland, they're of significant importance for wildlife because we don't, we no longer have vast tracts of native woodland and instead we have this significant network of hedgerows running about our country. It's estimated there's about 300,000 kilometres of hedgerow growing throughout Ireland. And it's hugely important, so it acts as a corridor and not only just for our wild birds but also a whole array of protected wild animals as well hedgehogs, badgers, foxes, they're all running along these linear corridors in the landscape. Of course then we have the species in the hedgerow, we have the lovely trees and even right here behind us we can see that we have lovely berries coming out now providing food and flowers here providing nectar food as well for insects. So they're hugely important. These hedgerows are part of what we would call an ecosystem service. They're providing things, they're maintaining wildlife for us, they're sucking up extra nutrients out of the ground, they're cleaning surface water that goes into the ground before it moves on elsewhere. So they're performing all these functions for us for free. So if you go back to basics and say, what is in the hedge? We have hawthorn, we have blackthorn, we have ash trees, we can have oak trees, I have elm trees over here, we have crab apple. We have um, honeysuckle, we have elder, elder bushes, uh, we have um, the briars, we have all the lower level of uh, small plants and, and flowers that are there. And all of those things come together to form what has become known as the hedgerow habitat. It's 40 years since I was in Ag College and did agricultural training after that. And at no stage in that time were we told 
the hedge is an important part of your enterprise. Uh, all you were worried about was when would you get the contractor in to mow it down so that it wouldn't be in the way for next year. And it never felt really right for me. I, I don't think it felt right for so many people, but you just went along with it. And uh, I mean, you, you had to go along with it to a certain extent because you really were looking towards making a living off what is your resource. Is there any financial return for the modern farmer in return for looking after the hedges? On a very basic level, brought home to you on certain times of the year, in the weather we had gone by, when there was extreme temperatures there uh, during the month of July of up to 30 degrees, uh, it was uh, very um, common to find the cattle heading for the shady spot in the hedge where the, some of the trees were causing shade and they'd go in out of the heat in under there. They'd use them in exactly the same way then in the bad weather, where if you want to find the cattle on a wet and windy day, they won't be looking on the windy side, they're usually on the other side looking for the shelter. And from that point of view, it contributes to the farm business. I worked in the mart um, for a few years in the sheepyard and I remember a man coming in, Lord of mercy on him, he's gone now, um, I remember him coming in one day around early part of March or April, I forget when Easter was that year, and I said to him, how did the sheep do for you this year? Ah, he says, they were all right. He says, there's not much shelter in an electric fence. And it has stayed with me because I don't want to be preaching to men. But he said it to me because it had impacted on his income. It is, here he was, it took him longer. He may have had to feed extra to his sheep to get the lambs to market where to get them in in time for the Easter market. And he was disappointed because they didn't thrive and the, he knew fully the reason they didn't thrive was the weather had affected them and they didn't have the shelter. There was no shelter in the electric wire. Plantain and the little flowers on the head of it, look. And that's actually a very healthy plant for, we've, we've included in grass seed mix now this year because uh, <laughs> like that, it's things that were in fields and land long ago when we started first and we were told that these are all weeds and you need to get rid of them because they're non-productive, 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 all this. And um, what we failed to what they fail to notice and fail to know, and they're only rediscovering now, is that those things have a natural warming effect on cattle. So if you have them in the grass, then uh, yarrow and plantain would be two of the good ones. Maintenance of any hedge is an essential part of their viability long term. But before you can start maintaining them, you must be aware that there are actually laws about when and what you can do with hedges. Between March 1st to August 31st, it's generally not permitted to um, cut, damage, grub, burn or destroy hedgerows. There are exemptions to that. There's exemptions for roadside hedgerows for public safety. Um, there are exemptions as well uh, with Department of Agriculture. If people want to remove hedgerows above a certain length, they need to get permission from Department of Agriculture to do that prior to removal. Uh, but usually they'll be asked not to do that during the bird nesting season if the permission is granted. The management of the hedge depends on the height, the age and the quality of the material in it. So if your hedges are in reasonable uh, in good quality and reasonably young that material will have a lot of life left in it for years to come and regular light trimming every couple of years or three or four years will maintain it in a structure form without affecting the biodiversity or the habitat effect of it or the resource that it is. When we need to trim it because on a roadway here you would need to keep it back otherwise it'll be out to here and you're, it's impeding your passage when we need to trim it, we'll only be taking off that nice flexible stuff there without going down into the woody material. And you'll shape the hedge a little bit that way. And we will take a little bit off the top, but you have to keep moving out a little bit. There's a year's growth. There's the new year's growth there, which is soft and flexible. Now that's quite easy to, to cut off and the flail coming along trimming that will bring that with it and it won't do a lot of damage to the wooden uh, to the material of the plant itself whereas if you come down here into this piece of blackthorn and there's new growth from this year and this year but there's older growth there 
If you use the, the flail to cut that, the woody material resists it and it causes it to shatter. And the shattering effect allows moisture and bacteria and fungi to get down into the plant and it starts a rotting process. That hedge has been trimmed with the flail in recent years. And looking at it now, can we find evidence of flail work on it? I don't think so. The last time round, all I got him to do was just go along and give it a light trim low down because you can see we didn't affect the crown in it anyway I just didn't want the briars coming out into the field and we didn't go in on the woody material at all but that is two years ago now the habitats that are in hedges you cannot create them in the space of overnight or ten years the developed habitat that is there has come about because those hedges are of the age that we spoke about which is one, two hundred, three hundred years in cases and the mixture of species is in it. So hedges, uh, the hedgerow system is there and is contributing so much to biodiversity and environment and we seem to take it for granted so much of the time. There is a known progressive loss of species across the world. As we impact on the environment around us with the growth of intensive chemical-based agriculture, and now we also have the major impact of climate change. Hedges and the survival of the ecosystem around them, with old knowledge helping, are suddenly a valued partner in Ireland's ecosystem future in so many ways.